So, uh, previously on 58 Keys, and actually very handily all collected together in a 58 Keys playlist about ebooks, we've gone over the cheapest way to make ebooks using Apple Gear. We've done the fastest way. And now it's time for the most elaborate. Quite possibly too elaborate, seriously. This is probably going to be more than you want to fiddle for ebooks, but it's exactly what you want to then take those ebooks forward and make paperback print books too. Hello, I'm William Gallagher. This is 58 Keys, which is for writers who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. Do subscribe so that you can most easily see all of the episodes in this special run of editions about making ebooks, plus just endless oodles more for you. Um, two things before we start this one, uh, this edition about powerful book apps. The first is that I am going to show you two major apps, but I'm not saying you need both. It is one or the other. They have immense similarities. Uh, they have some clear differences that you'll see. Actually, the ebooks either of these two produce need some extra fiddling before you can sell them, actually even read them. That was a surprise. Uh, but then the second thing I must tell you is that I've got something wrong. I know I wanted to show you the cheapest way to make an ebook, which is pages. And I knew I absolutely must show you Vellum, the fastest way, gorgeous fastest way. And today's ones, I know, got to tell you about these now. But there are many, many other apps. And viewer Pete Wilson asked about one of them in the comments. And it's one of them that I should have included. So I will now, after we look at Adobe InDesign and Affinity Publisher. Right, uh, Adobe InDesign first. Uh, this is kind of a hammer, really, to crack and not the size of a pixel. But it's a really, really good hammer. And practically every book or magazine you've read in the last 10 years, maybe 20, has been done in Adobe InDesign because uh, it's that successful and it's that successful because it is that good. Um, in a moment, uh, we'll recreate the same book that we've been doing in each of these editions, the teen writing workshop story thing you, you've seen bits of. But first, just because I can't, I've got to show you this. Um, let's open up this one. This is... Uh, a book that I designed in Adobe Illustrate, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign a very long time ago, several years. And notice double page spreads. With an ebook, you're better doing single pages rather than a spread like this. Uh, links for things. You see all these nice boxes where I can rearrange them. Let me get to the very top. And there's, yeah, you can change different fonts, different graphics. You can do anything you like. And that produces a paperback book like, uh, well, more than like. In fact, it produces this one. Love that book. I was reading it again last night. I should work from it. Uh, it's a book for writers who don't, uh, who are having trouble finding time uh, to write. Yeah, okay, I'll put the link in for you. Okay. Um, but let's do our new book. Let me close this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we will do a new book. So let's just do a new Adobe InDesign document. There is actually an option for an Adobe InDesign book, but that's different. That is for more when you're setting out large scale paperbacks and things. For what we need, we just open a basic document. And this is a basic one page InDesign document. It's um, whatever the size this is. You see the frame here, that's not, doesn't print, but it's a guideline uh, for you. Um, even with an ebook, you can't print to the, you can't have text go all the way to the edge because it just looks rubbish. But with print books, it might not even print the bits at the end. So there's a safe area for you to put things in. But as well as text, you can also put in images. So in fact, let me do exactly that because we have prepared our cover image. Same cover image we prepared in every episode of this special. That's, there we go. That's actually this one I am going to pop in there. Oh, that is utterly horrible. That is far, far, far too big. Let's change that and do it again. I'm going to cover that. Let's see. Right. Now, reasonably happy with that, except you notice uh, it has gone over these edges. In fact, it's gone over the page. I don't mind that. Um, I want the image to fill the whole cover, and that will definitely do it. So 
and let there be some stuff over as long as you can read the title and the credits for it I'm happy with that let's add some pages let's add a page after that and now let's add in our text and I'm going to place the text select the text I've prepared options that we're not going to cover today now you notice on the the cursor here it's kind of it's like it's loaded with my text and just underneath that little arrow part of the cursor if I hold down different keys you can see certain things happen with it to do with flowing text I am going to see what happens I position it just there and click this has it's not only put in the text of our book but it's created another page for the next bit of it and the next and the next that is the complete text it's made enough pages for everything and we're kind of done I mean I, I think that text is really big and there's no page numbers for it there's no content space there's loads and loads of things we could do but this is where we would do it and the next thing we should we have to do is this export and it's EPUB fixed layout and reflowable I've said to you before e e unless you've been really precise about the layout and you don't mind the reader may have to fiddle about to see what they're doing reflowable is better so let's call this countdown InDesign countdown is the name of the project I was working on and we save and that should be that there is an ebook in the standard EPUB format. And if you read on Apple Books, or in fact, most of you readers, most of the time, that's it, you're fine. Just not always, and not with Kindle. And since you do really, really want to be read on Kindle, because it's by far the most common ebook reader, this is a bit of a pain. Amazon actually has released a plugin for InDesign that makes InDesign export in Kindle's particular flavour of EPUB, but it doesn't work. It won't even install in the current versions of InDesign. So, you can run your book through a converter next, and I will show you one in a moment. Um, but you could also, you saw in the export options there, you can export as a PDF. Kindle will read PDF. I think when you do that, you end up coming back to InDesign to fiddle a lot more to make that PDF look nice. But you can do it, and there are a lot more controls and options. I mean, look, I love InDesign so much that I wanted to show you. But I've been a bit disappointed with uh, that plugin not working, with that fiddling with PDFs. So some ebooks just not reading so InDesign can do ebooks but I recommend that you use it for this when you are also making paperback or hardback books there is also an issue about cost uh, InDesign is a subscription app which costs around 20 um, pounds or dollars per month I, I use it about three months out of the year or I did last time I had a project that I would normally do in InDesign I tried it out using an alternative which I now also hugely like Affinity Publisher Affinity Publisher is not subscription, it's a one-time purchase, usually of uh, $50 or about £50, but right now, uh, February 2021, late February 2021, it's on sale for half that price, and it's such a bargain, I practically bought it again. Um, not to make this uh, InDesign versus Publisher, though, here is how we make uh, this ebook in Publisher, and you're going to recognise it all already. So here is Affinity Publisher. Doesn't it look pretty much similar? I mean, the icons are in color. That, that's an important difference. Let's do new document. Uh, this one actually comes with a ton of presets that I just don't know. But if I look into this one, devices, well, here's a Kindle. We want to end up on Kindle. Let's choose that. I really think anything works. You just sometimes fiddle, sometimes not. Um, notice, by the way, yet again, just like InDesign, here is one document. It doesn't have that purple frame around it, but you could add it. It has assumed that you're going to be using more than one page. That's given us 10. Let's uh, bring in the cover first, see what happens. Well, that's fine. I just, I want to make that a bit smaller. Okay, that'll do me. Again, it's over the edges, but for the cover, I don't mind because I don't care where the cover crops as long as you can see the title properly. And actually, in this case, because I notice there is a frame here now when we do this, uh, that was a bit, the title was a bit close to it. But there we go. I now have a front cover. Let's go to page one, page two rather now. And we will again, it's again called Place. And because it's the same book, we're placing the same text. And now nothing appears to have happened. 
Uh, but if I click here, I get the text that I want in a frame. Now here, there are many different ways of doing this. And again, you can set up pages, master pages, that mean everything looks the same on every page. But just for this for now, I'm gonna stretch out this frame to what looks all right to me. All right, and that's fine. And now we have here, it's an overmatter button. It looks slightly different from Adobe InDesign's, but it's the same one. It's saying, oi, there is more text than can be fitted in this box, in this frame. In this case, in Publisher, if I hold down the Shift key and click that, let me just position that carefully in case I click wrong. Yeah, it has added all of these pages. Now, again, I think the text is far too big, you know, but that, that was my choice as it came through. I could have told it no, make it something different, or I can go through now and make it smaller. I can delete a bit from page one and all the other pages will shuffle up. Exactly the same as in InDesign. But just as with InDesign, yeah, we're kind of done, really. Um, let's just export this. And there's good and bad here. This is the exporter in Affinity Publisher. And you notice how many billions of options there are, because each of these has options underneath it. What you will spot if you look closely is that none of those are EPUB, the format for eBooks. What we instead need to do is print in PDF. Let me stop there. As much as I really like InDesign, I also really like Affinity Publisher. Both of them are amazing apps, just utterly tremendous, fantastic that we've got them. But what they both showed up, much more than Pages of Vellum did in previous episodes, is that eBooks and the ePub format they use, it's a bit rubbish, really. Over and over this time, I was finding that Kindle just wouldn't open an eBook, unless I used a converter tool like this one, Calibre. Link in the show notes for that boy. It's a bit clunky, but it works. But then, you know, sometimes even a converter, online converters, that one, they just wouldn't help. And this, all of this does, what this does is makes me run back to pages or certainly to vellum. I have come to appreciate both much more after doing this with you. So let's call this edition of 58 Keys an enormous endorsement, recommendation, championing of uh, Adobe InDesign, Affinity Publisher, and of keeping eBooks simple. Actually, one last way to keep ebooks simple is the app that Pete Wilson asked about in the comments, the app that I was wrong to leave out of this quick roundup and that I'll put right now. It's Scrivener, specifically Scrivener for Mac. The last stage in Scrivener, when you're finished writing, or think you've finished writing anyway, uh, is to compile you're writing into a format that can be read by other people, a format to send to people, so Word, plain text, PDF, and so on. On the Mac, you can choose to send it to them in an EPUB, ebook, ebook format. On the Mac, Scrivener also gives you many options to do that, and it is powerful, it's pretty easy when you get used to it, and it works. On the iPad, yeah, not so much. You can only make a PDF, but as you've seen, PDF can be fine. I think the reason I left out Scrivener was just that in my mind, I see it as a writing tool. Usually with Scrivener, I finish the writing and I'm sending my work off from it to publishers. I don't usually have to think about publishing myself. But I should have remembered that you could do it. And uh, if it's not as powerful as InDesign or Affinity Publisher, it's very good. So thanks, Pete, for saying that. And also for not saying, oi, why did you, how did you, could you forget that? Uh, Listen, I think I was actually really excited about ebooks when we did the first two episodes of this, and certainly, you know, I've read enough of them, and I have found it immensely useful popping whatever my current writing project is onto my iPad in ebook form just to proofread. And um, seeing how powerful Adobe InDesign and Affinity Publisher are, Publisher are, somehow I feel like it's reminded me of how unpowerful ebooks can be. But look what those tools can do for print books. Next time, in the last of these ebooks and now print book special editions, 58 Keys, we'll cover how to sell these things, how to sell them on your website, how to get them on Amazon, how to get them on Apple Books. Thanks for watching this one. Do remember to subscribe and to check out the playlist of where all of these ebook specials are living and waiting for you. And take care of yourself, eh? I'll see you soon.